How's it? How's it, guys? Welcome. Podcast number three. Good evening, yeah. Uh, if you stuck around for number three, thank you very much. <laughs> or I don't know, maybe thank you, commiserations with you anyway. Yes. Um, yes. Thanks to the guys. Thanks for all the support and and the, uh, the feedback from, from the last podcast. Glad you guys enjoyed it. Sorry it took so long, but we've, I think we figured it out now. Thanks for the feedback from the last podcast. Lots of stuff happening. And um, we previously said we were going to talk about uh, firearms rights, but that's a little bit boring. Uh, Ron and I, ha- we have discussed it a bit, and we think it's uh, there's enough there's enough info on the ether uh, regarding it. But because of all the happenings in the last couple of weeks, uh, a big thing: Texas shooting. Wow! Second Crazy. Or- Melville, Melville shooting. Melville shooting and the Newtown Medford Fitzgerald Square shooting. Yes. So l- we thought, one, let's actually have a look at all the stuff that's happening in the last couple of weeks. And two, uh, what we're going to get to is our uh, shooting and training goals for 2020, which will be a good start. It's almost like we're putting a, uh, drawing our own line in the sand. Practice what, a, practice what we preach. Yes, yes. So, yeah, we're going to get to that. But let's start first. Um, um, where are we going to start? Overseas? or Let, Let's start overseas and work our way yeah, yeah. to home. Yes. Texas. So, can we just, before we get to the actual shooting, at one stage, somebody thought it's a good idea to try a mass shooting in Texas. <laughs> yeah, that makes no... Yeah. Look, you know, that, it's, that, <laughs> it I'm, happened I'm, before. It, no, there was one recently. I can't remember who it was, but yeah. there, there was one recently. And um, all, the, all the liberals were crying, yes, it's Texas, where were all the guns all the people defending it but in this case the the texas guys and we'll we'll load it onto the page if you um if you haven't seen this you're under a rock you need to get out a bit more we will post this on our page anyway yeah i'll, I'll throw the videos on the on the on the page Facebook like page, i did yeah. with, the, with the previous uh podcast so first things first texas everybody carries a gun in a church this guy came and he took a chance. Um, I don't necessarily have all the details in terms of the actual shooter and why he wanted to do it. Yeah, there's quite a bit of speculation still out about that. But um, this guy walked into church, looked a bit dodgy. The security team in the church scoped him. Next moment, it looks like a pump action shotgun with a pistol grip. Um, mm, shorty, kind yeah. of shooting it from the hip. Um, and it just goes pear shape from there very, very quickly. One church member, also on the security team, got up, tried to draw his gun. He got shot. A second security team member um, behind the shooter. And what's really strange is a lot of pe- a lot of the folks of the security detail of which this guy, Jack Wilson, he's also a firearms trainer. Apparently, he's the head um, of the security okay. team in the church. Yeah. Yes. So now, some people actually saw that something was a little bit off, but we'll get to that later on. Got into church, sat down, at one point in time, got up, drew, and the video is a little bit, little bit not high quality because it's on the far, it's on the far opposite side of the camera shot. But what was strange is he drew, don't know if it was just hanging under a jacket or something, but drew the firearm or the, the shotgun and then proceeded to point it at some of the what congregation? congregation members yeah and and do it and then it went pressure because one of the security members he he drew and something that ron and i we've we've discussed this as well is that one okay. there was a lot of time happening I'm there just stop you just for a second mm. i think guys it, it's very important before we go further that we just repeat what we said in the previous podcast us discussing shootings and armchair expertise yes. is not intended to to belittle what happened or criticize whatever or criticize it in a negative way but if we do not talk about what went wrong talk what can, can be learned from an incident such as this or can be then, better yeah, yeah can be done better that yeah. death or that injury or whatever was in vain hmm. so it's not intended to belittle it's not intended to to take anything away from the shooters or the heroes but it's about and learning. it's and it's again yeah. it's one of those hindsights is twenty twenty for sure. So, looking at the actual shooting, there was some time from when the shooter had the shotgun out until the first 
security member drew what is small of back it looks like small of the back looks like small yeah. of a back carry um drew and once he was drawn he did not manage to get a shot off because the uh, the shooter then engaged him and engaged the second person but right after that as he turns around and moves away um, this jack wilson shoots shoots the 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 bad guy um, one shot in the head at about they call it 50 50 feet what is that i reckon i reckon from the video it looks to me like 16 meters about yeah. 15 16 odd meters um and which is which is far with handgun you know um it's 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 not above the limit but it's you need a some level of skill to pull a headshot off at 15 meters yeah that was that was i would say that was a remarkable shot look and again hindsight is 2020 and we could see in hindsight 2020 uh, we know there's a lot of things that could have been done better but one it was a very it was a remarkable shot the guy was moving at the time but jack wilson tracked him nicely one shot to the head and the threat was over let's discuss points about it i think the first thing that kind of stood out for me when i read the article afterwards this guy came into church the the report said he was wearing a wig and a beard and one of the best books you can read if you want to prepare yourself for any bad incident is, is a book called left of bang i'll put a link on the website and one of the things that they mention in the book is looking for anomalies what doesn't look right in that specific place or time mm. and a guy with a wig and a fake beard a long coat in texas on a sunday morning here yeah, or on a church a, a new year's morning that just doesn't look right the church security team members clocked him so that's a win right there somebody realized something isn't lacquer um and and they were prepared and that just means that just tells me they were prepared and thinking a little bit further than you know the average the average security team on one of the forums it is actually quite interesting that um someone mentioned and it actually makes a lot of sense when you think about it uh, people in a church one uh, they would they would take they would take a church as a very safe place it's definitely a condition white yeah, kind of scenario like a, uh, and and secondly uh, everybody's facing and focused on one central point where the guy is talking so yeah it's a lot of it's a tough space if you if you think about it what really what was really I wouldn't say nice to see but what was really interesting to see is that they actually had quite a big security detail four or five guys armed right after the attack took place yeah if if we look at the the first responder um there was a couple of things that stood out for me the first thing that that he did was he stood up he was stationary when he drew he was drawing from the small of the back and what bothered me was if i look at his draw and guys once again armchair yeah, it's, it's, it's not critique guys this guy paid he, he paid the ultimate price yeah so he yeah, paid the right. ultimate price so and he was willing i think mm. and, and let's not mm. take that away from him but what bothered me when i looked at it was like his draw was for the lack of a better way to describe it lackadaisy there was no sense of purpose to his draw. He's kind of fumbling a little bit behind his back. And from another breakdown I saw, it, it was in, in the region of about three, between three and four second, seconds. For a draw, that's ages. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's a ridiculous amount of time to draw a handgun. Um, and my opinion at the moment, stand to be corrected, he actually had enough time. He had enough time. Um, he had enough space. Look, look, do, do, look do, do, I'll, it, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll disagree with you a bit there. I don't think he probably would have had enough time to to get away with everything. The actual, the actual first responder, the, f the first first security detail guy that actually did something. But I think he would have at least got a shot or two off. Yeah. And um, and that's like like again. Yes, this guy, he, he, he was willing, he did it. He, he paid the ultimate price. Mm. 
and um, he was ready and prepared. But again, it's like we're saying, we have to look at the at the we net result. We have to take the emotion yeah, out. Yeah, we have to take the emotion, and but the net result of it is is that um, would a quicker draw happen help there? Yeah, absolutely. But then um, on the other hand, maybe his equipment setup was not one hundred percent ideal. Ideal. And look, it's. Uh, I was thinking the same thing driving in the car yesterday. It's like. Um, You'll never get any scenario where your setup or your equipment is one hundred percent ideal to whatever the situation or the or or your living arrangement or you might be in the car with a jacket on um, or your suit. It's and, not perfect. Your suit mm. and tie today or no, there's there's no such thing. But again, it's like one of those things. And then, um, but what it did give was. Um, the actual guy that did the shooting jack I think it gave him some time because the shooter was distracted by the, mm. the first responder and did the second guy even get his uh, a firearm out or did or did the shooter just take him no I think that from what it looks to me on the video the second guy that got shot just he just kind of responded or probably made noise or something behind it stood up yeah. or something like that yeah. um, and then um, after uh, Jack Wilson shot the attacker what was very interesting to me was um, there was, I think on the video, I saw about four other congregation members that stormed in, all of them handguns drawn. Mm. What was a little bit of a concern for me there was many of them were sweeping all over the, the rest of the people standing there. You have people running. Um, and then if you look at Jack when he moved forward, his gun was in a high ready position as he moved forwards towards the attacker after he shot him. No, guys, it's, it's That's training. Guys, you don't rise to the occasion. Occasion. You actually you fall to your training. And it, it's it's again it's one of those things. And and like just in a nutshell, what I really take from it is one is you can see that people were actually prepared to for their own security. Yeah. Two, albeit not perfect and and all and it's one of those things like uh, ifs, ands and buts. If the guy had a quicker draw, he might have had a shot off. Yeah, but it, it might not have changed the situation or the outcome. But the, the bottom line to the outcome is one. I suspect more people would have died if these people weren't oh, there. It's, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. yeah. And then, and secondly, it's what's really great to see is that these guys were making an effort to be prepared for this type of situation. And in Jack Wilson's case, um, it paid off. You can actually see very, pro very proficient... Um, training kicking in um, good outcome and very important guys and we see it quite a bit on some of the Facebook group local Facebook groups do not for one second think that because you're in church you're safe mm -hmm. church shootings church attacks etc are a reality I mean Ghana in South Africa was founded on the back of the St. James Church massacre in South Africa yes it was a couple of years ago fact is it happened it, it happened now as well so there's a there's actually this this chap, i watched an interview with this jack wilson and um, in the interview and this is years ago when he started i think it was 1995 there was this weird statistic that and you got to think of guys we we don't understand the 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 concept 100 percent of the american living and the living standards and crime standards and what's happening there but apparently it was like there was a Texas church was robbed every second Sunday in Texas in, in like 1995 or something. Like, look, it's I don't have 100% the, the, the stat in front of me. But think about it. Like, churches are robbed because one... Cash. Cash, people are donating. And then two, people are, are easy, relaxed. Easy targets. Oh. <laughs> easy targets. So, guys, again, it's one of those things. Just think about it. Put yourself in a bad guy's shoes. Yes. What's going to be easiest? Um, they, they're not necessarily going to try the, the tough ones. They're going to look for easy targets. It's simple as that. Now, I think that's enough enough of the Texas, Texas. shooting. Look, guys, again, um, we've made some... We may have made some... Wicked Warrior comments. Yeah, r real critique of it. And again, it, it's from us. We, we're nowhere near experts. Um, but again... Uh, we I, need to take the emotion out. Yeah, mm -hmm. and highlighting the fact that these guys, they, they, they did put everything on the line, which I think we would do for our families as well, our loved ones. But we have to look at it in a constructive way and saying, hang on, what, what can we do better? Otherwise, and, it would have been in vain. Yeah, precisely that.
second shooting closer to well, kind of closer to home close to home for, for some of our listeners yeah um, New Year's Day Melville yeah and, that, and there was two that was Melville and uh, Newtown what's it Mary Fitzgerald Square lights on info for the Newtown one I think 11 people got uh, wounded nobody died which is which is great but here's the thing when I saw the, when I saw the first news article apparently somebody went on the M2 now if, if you know Joburg a little bit I think it's a double decker you know the double decker highway yeah it's apparently somebody stopped there and was shooting from the double decker highway into the square yeah yeah it's like no it's nuts it's like stuff out of the movie that's got no purpose aside from to hurt people yeah there's no robbery motive there's nothing like that that's purely I want to hurt people mm. um, and and that's an eye, that's a that should be an eye-opener because sometimes there's no motive like a robbery or anything mm. like that it's purely to hurt yeah yeah and let's talk about a tactical reality if somebody's shooting at you from on top of a double decker highway one is you probably won't know where they are shooting from and it was at night as well I think it, yeah. yeah it was I think it was two or three o'clock in the morning oh, no. no it's, cra- it's crazy stuff but it, um, light on info there, at least nobody got killed. 11 people, I think 11 people are in hospital because of that. And then um, then the other rough one is uh, Melville. Now, initially, when I saw the Melville shooting, it had a lot of almost sort of like a terrorist connotation to it. It was like, yeah, this is, how can I say it? Light on info, didn't know too much. But now what's come to light, and, 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 and it seems to me, uh, or uh, according to the new, some of the news reports that we're getting, is it? these guys in Melville had an altercation inside. And after the altercation, went outside, got in the car, and, and came back later and, dro- and did a drive-by. And what's crazy here, and I just want to give it a little bit of a personal spin. We're sitting here like in the Republic of the Garden and Route in George, but about a month ago, I was in Joburg for work. And... Um, me and a good friend of mine, we had dinner in Melville. We sat outside at one of the restaurants. Then we went for drinks at another place across the road. We sat outside as well. So right, it's, it's the same <laughs> space. Yeah, it's good. the same space. Yeah. It, it's, it's the same space. Mm. And guys, <laughs> it can happen anytime, anywhere. And very good chance you'll be an innocent bystander. And and here's the thing. So now, like, I'm a big advocate for. I don't want to. I don't want to stop living my life. I do what I want, or to, to some sort of degree where your safety, or let's call it, it's not a degree of your own safety. It's just safety concerns yeah. that could arise. Now, and Rowan and I, we've discussed this quite a bit. It's like number one. Um, we've always said, what play stupid games, win stupid prizes. If you are in a place at three o'clock on on New Year's Day in the morning looking to pick a fight with people hang on <laughs> number one is you need to you need to reevaluate your choices like i'm not saying it's it's the it's the wrong thing to do but in this case what could have been for the lack of a better word de-escalated hang on guys no need to fight whatever the reason get out one is the first prize is to avoid it and the second is to de-escalate it so, yeah so these guys obviously they st- apparently started inside the bar. Alcohol was involved. Guys went out, came mm. back and started shooting. So yeah, it's, no. whether it's a bar or a road rage incident or some guy bumped into your trolley and pick and pay, check your ego. Yeah, and cool. You Be do cool. not need to whip it out and show yours is bigger right there. Yeah. there. It's got no purpose whatsoever. Yeah, it, it'll just... It'll just escalate it. So again, like, look, they they might, and again, it's we light on information, and 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 what we get is not always one hundred percent factual and true and correct. But what I would take from the Melville shooting, it's how did the one trainer ex- explain to us? There's two types of fight: life or death, and there's what's it? Recreational fighting. In this case, it was recreational fighting that escalated quickly into something very deadly. So, and again, I'm not saying try and avoid everything because if you try and avoid and be safe, you're going to just stay sit in, home. sit at home and do nothing. But the key is when you are in a place, public place, the aim is to de-escalate. First is to avoid, 
second to de-escalate. And if you need to be the inverted commas lesser man, then That's leave. Leave. It's yeah. okay. You do not need to prove your manliness to a random guy in a bar. Yeah. It's not. It's simply not worth it. If you've got, if we both enjoy fighting and grappling and boxing and do all that kind of stuff, I I, I get it that sometimes you want to you, you like it. There's a place for it, and especially if there's alcohol involved. Um, oh, like, and no. uh, alcohol and emotions and all these types of things, it, it's a, it's a recipe. But again, it's one of those. It's like literally just your your goal is to avoid and de-escalate and get out. It's go to the gym, go to the MMA gym, go boxing, go grappling, go do something to get it out of you. Yeah? And also very important, if you're a bystander, do not get yeah, involved. Don't get involved. Uh, it's not not your circus, not your monkeys. Okay, but hang on. So like, there's a caveat to this. It's like I'm a big believer that if if we can make a difference, you should. But it's very tough for you to make that personal decision. We actually, we discussed There's no it. rule of thumb yeah, for it. Yeah, and, there's, yeah. and we discussed it a little bit earlier as well. The whole point about it is, I've got family and kids. Rowan's got a brand new family. There might be kids one of these days. Um, your your goal as, to get home. as a husband is you need to protect, protect and provide for your family. If you're not there, i.e. dead, you can't do any of those things that's 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 step one but there there are times that we need to step up because we can make a difference and um, but again that's that's your own level that's your own personal decision and you need to be you need to be ready uh, on your own let's call it spiritual level yeah We'll talk about we'll break willingness down in a separate podcast. Yeah, yeah. Look, because it's a discussion all by itself. It, it's a big discussion, but I would actually go as far as saying, I, my family knows that I will, I will try and make a difference if if I'm capable. But again, it's one of those things you need to actually look at it and say, all right, what are you able to do? Will it be effective? And like Rowan says, will you go? Will, will you get home? <laughs> you got to be. Yes, you've got to be clear on these things. Hence, with the saying is, uh, rather don't get involved. Yeah, avoid, it's not worth it. Try and, try and see it coming earlier. Avoid it. And if it's starting to happen, actually de-escalate. Somebody the once said it so well. Don't go to stupid places with stupid people and do stupid shit. At stupid times of the night. Yeah. yeah. yeah anyway. All right. So enough scenarios for today's guys. Just be safe. Yes. Yeah, and like, it's actually quite strange that it was all over the Christmas silly season. But uh, yeah, sorry, I, sorry, I, I just want to take one step back before we move on. And if you're a bystander, if that happens, get the hell out. Grab your wife, girlfriend, fiance, and just get the hell out of there. You do not need to hang around for any of any know, of the repercussions. If the police and stuff rocks up later, and you want to be a witness, that that's all good and well. But you do not need to sit around there and just get the hell out because you do not. There's simply too many variables. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so now. Here's the fun part of this podcast. So, wh- what was the quote? We probably have to practice a bit of what we preach. <laughs> <laughs> so, talking about the training onion of the previous podcast, just uh, a quick recap. Uh, we would go, it's fitness, medical training, unarmed combatives, uh, fundamentals, shooting fundamentals, and then tactical training. Um, the cool stuff, the low speed, low, low speed, high drag. <laughs> high speed low drag <laughs> anyway so uh, Ron and I haven't discussed this and, and the reason the reason why we are talking about our goals and plans for 2020 it's actually it's, it's this is probably more for our own record keeping like what are we planning to do and we'll do a breakdown end of the year if, if we're yeah. still here how, and say how did we do how did we do yes and you guys can hold us to account yes and tease us yeah <laughs> tease us yes <laughs> so Talking fitness wise, so um, I'm starting a, a just to give myself a, a proper break. I've had a couple of niggling injuries that just not did not want to get away. Um, lots of physical therapy, lots of specialists. It's it's all it's bull dust anyway. Um, long story short, I'm feeling good. I'm gonna start. I'm f- I'm fat though. I picked up a good six kilograms over December. I don't know about you. <laughs> I, I will admit I was not man enough to get onto the scale. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, I'll rather get into gunfight. Mm. 
So, long story short, I have some extra poundage that I need yes, to get. but it makes us harder to kidnap. Yes. <laughs> Same year. I mean, uh, December was lacking, and it's supposed to be lacking. And don't feel guilty about all the beer that you drank in December. But, you know, the New Year starts, New Year's resolutions and all yeah, that. Yeah, it's good and fresh, yeah. Um, for me as well, I think um, I'm lucky enough that my... I don't have any serious injuries, but... 2019 was kind of a, a Rubicon year for me and that I need to had to make some decisions in terms of what kind of physical training can I do from now on. I've, I have a very old back injury and that was fixed and ugh, it's not lacquer. So my, my days of heavy lifting and that kind of stuff is, is long and gone. Yeah, now. let's let's call it, let's call it trying to, and, and I'll, I'll be the first to admit um, my crossword days are, are long gone. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm trying to, trying to piss with the young lighties. Um, look, CrossFit was good in a sense for me, but it's definitely not working out injury-wise for me. But now, uh, I think Rowan as well, we we, we not necess- necessarily struggled with the, the lifting part of it, but it's a big thing is the ego part. Guys, and I'll be the first to admit, yeah. e- walking, into, walking into any gym, any place where you've got uh, uh, people that you sort of compete against or even just people visually seeing what you're doing, I have, uh, I am a fairly type A personality with some some ego issues. And then if you see a guy that's thirty kgs lighter than you and he's picking up more than you, my male reptilian Neanderthal brain yeah, the tells brain. me that no, you shall not. And then, not <laughs> and then you try to beat him, and the next day you go and get an Voltaren injection because you can't walk. Yeah, I can't walk. So, and that for me was, Ruan, stop being stupid. So, what are you doing for fitness in 2020? So, uh, boxing starting again on Monday. Um, we, we The gym was closed, so I didn't have much of a choice when it came to that. So, that's thing for me. Boxing um, at least th- uh, four days a week. Um, four days a week is lots. So. Four days a week is lot because that's the only thing I'm doing at the moment for, mm. in terms of, um, and I'm and I'm actually enjoying my my fitness. You know my exercise. No, you obviously, you'll get a lot of. And then make, it makes it lacquer. Yeah. Um, that for me is a big thing. There are some talks I have not agreed to it yet, but I've been. There's been some talks that I need to take an amateur fight. Oh, lovely! Um, I said that I am in <laughs> principle willing to take a fight. But given my fitness and everything need to, to be there, mm. so they, they will be an interme- uh, kind of intermediate term, medium term goal there somewhere as well. But I don't have dates or anything Guys, yet. I will take videos. <laughs> I, I will take videos as evidence anyway. And, and you know what? Maybe it's a little bit of an ego thing. I just want to see if, I'm, if, I, if I'll do it and if I'll get into the ring. Oh, I think no. you need to do it. No. Like, yeah. It's like anything. It's like if you, um, on a personal note, I don't think anybody would want to train anything and not be able to at least... Guys, even like golfers, if you're a golfer, like, and you haven't competed in your your clubs, club championship, you must just go and Take do part, it. Take yeah. It's not a, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. And then second fitness goal, um, I used to do quite a bit of surf ski paddling when I lived in Cape Town. And um, I, I used to do, I've done one or two races back in the day. And as the saying goes, life happened. Um, and I had to give that up. Um, now that I'm married, I'm looking for something for me and my wife to do together, and she's quite keen to take up paddling. So that's something that I'm seriously looking at getting gear and whatnot again. But, you know, there's obviously a financial, you know, component to that. Yeah, so guys, I'll um, just, just, uh, just as a side note, there's a book, and I'll share the link to it. It's actually about learning a new skill, and you'll be amazed how quick it is. 20 hours of deliberate practice can actually get you into a new skill and do something so i'll share that the details to that book and you need to go read it it's it's quite good in terms of this like the first part if you want to do something like he wants to well, do some surf skiing he needs to get the equipment um, you need to make the commitment whatever you choose for your poison you need to make the commitment so you've got rowing and boxing rowing and boxing yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm i'm i just need to lose weight first like everything that's kind of a given for me i didn't even bring it up (laughs) everything everything so um my initial fitness goals is just to like eat better and i.e eating better means i'm i'm 11 meals ahead and about four shits behind (laughs) maybe even more look i need to lose some weight everything everything is better for me when i'm lighter everything feels better 
I, I sleep, I move, everything is better. So um, my first goal is I f all the weight I lost for my wedding, I picked up. How's that? Yo, that's glorious, dude. <laughs> okay, so I'm I'm right now. I'm probably I'm s not probably I'm 15.9 kilos overweight of what my fighting sizes should be. So yeah, the goal is to hit 100 this year. Not going to put too much pressure and try and do it early. And it's it's a little bit over a kilo every month, which is if you look at it, it's actually quite. It's quite doable. My goal is to get under 110, which is my varsity weight. When I was at my fittest, the youngest, and most virile. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, uh, peg in the sand. 100, 100 for me, 100 and 110 for Rowan. But then what I'm also doing is um, quite a new... To give you a little bit of background to it, I, I think high-intensity interval training, very high-intensity stuff, it's all good and well, but it's... But getting a little bit older now, a lot of the stuff that I'm researching is actually pointing to a case of it's not necessarily the the intensity of your training. And they actually look at this uh, for a lot of um, high performance, like top, top endurance athletes. So these guys or ladies, their training regime is or protocol, it's much more related to intensity if you'd say it, uh, uh, at 100% it would be the most that you could put out out of 10 training sessions only one is a high intensity session where um, 8 of the 10 is uh, medium intensity so it's it's 50 to 60% of what their output is so for me it's I'm going to focus a little bit and there's a there's a, a book and, I'll, and again I'll share that as well it's uh, Pavel Tsatsulin he's a kettlebell guy and I'm, and this I'll point as a fact. Um, my last year of playing rugby, I could not do all the road work, or I, not that it's necessarily that I could not do it. I did not want to. Road work is, it's crap. <laughs> Run, running, uh, running lots daily is not fun uh, for me, or, or, or anyway for me. And um, I ended up for a year doing only two sessions of kettlebell training a week. Um, that year of rugby, it was I would say was, I was probably the, the strongest, most flexible. But it's it's because kettlebells focus a lot on the core. So um, I'll share this book. Uh, it's it's called uh, The Quick and the Dead from Pavel Tsatsuli. But I'm going to base my training on that for the next foreseeable future. Again, I just want to. I don't necessarily want to be super super endurance fit. Um, I just need to be a little bit more one lighter and two because I'm doing this the kettlebells it's my core focus on getting my core right and then yeah I'll take it from there it's not, no other real super fitness goals but um, the weight in that look I'll I'll start in incorporating one or two in intensive elements and um, something that we did you know what we did this this holiday that was actually quite fun and I actually figured out I'm quite bad at and I used to be very good at it is hiking and we live in one of the prettiest parts of the country so there's a lot of hiking opportunities for us here so uh, um, my 20 basically my 2020 goals is um, uh, be more injury proof nice volume training but not heavy not heavy intensity lose a lot of weight and do a lot of hiking because the hiking is like we, we there's lots of opportunities for us here and it's something that my family and my kids can do with me. Yeah, I think that's a, you, you brought in your very last point, you know, and I was thinking, I mean, I've always been active, but it's always been kind of solo, solo stuff. And I think that that's why I deliberately picked a sport that I know my wife can do with me um, because it makes it the timing and the way to get time and stuff because it's still mm. time together. Mm. Um, so, yeah. And here's the thing, like what you want to do, that, that surf skiing and the paddling and all that you still need to get there and do the exercise or do the do the do whatever you need to do and then there's always the after and it's 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 everything's a little adventure it's great mm. okay so great point number two of uh, layer training. number two in the tactical onion mm. training onion <laughs> so the training onion the lovely. tactical training onion the tactical training onion what's it the tt the tto <laughs> so um medical training like one for me is we really need to to just do a refresh on stop the bleed and uh, a second one and and this is this is something that Rowan and i will 
very much similar because we have to get a, the trainers here mm. and um, uh, we'll probably do a level three with wild medics so was it yeah. walter walter meyer Wal walter meyer wild walter medics meyer, yeah. yeah so yeah that's that's pretty much it for uh for 2020 but definitely stop the bleed uh, and and then obviously the what's it level three was then level three mm. yeah so yeah that's there's not really much else mm. in t in terms of that guys we put all the the stop and bleed trainers on the previous post so yeah we'll share yeah, it again share guys, it again it's, yeah it's, it's, it's one of those things almost like i think we've, we've probably created a, a, like a, a, a pack like yeah. an info pack moving on unarmed unarmed combatives mm. so i'm gonna start rolling again jiu-jitsu which is actually it, it, sh it, it forms part of my fitness but it's not going to be really as fitness intensive but i'm definitely going to start rolling once a week again barring uh, barring any crazy injuries oh. the goal with the jiu-jitsu this year is take it easy it's all about technique and less about intensity i think that's something that we did completely wrong we we had silverback mode and and ended up not necessarily injuring ourselves, but injuring other people. It's, it's not great. Mm. Yeah, it's not a great space. Yeah, and in terms of armed combatives, you know, I think I figured out that the boxing is doing quite a bit for my hand speed and the unarmed combative side, and um, you know, kind of just working out on that and kind of incorporating that with the you know, kind of com combative concepts, more inverted commas, combative side. Mm. You know the. Uh, getting to your gun, um, doing some more force on force training this year. Look, is something we've discussed. Yeah, look, the, yeah. look, the look, we always talk like the unarmed, the unarmed and the armed sort of actually come together for us, especially in yeah. the training aspect. And um, what we're going to definitely do is, I know it's, it's almost something in the news again. Uh, there was a video doing the rounds of this guy, and did you see that the guy in the multi cam? You've no, you've been in lots of discussions about him. Um, it's almost like the gun carter. Oh my goodness! Yeah. So no. this, so this guy. No. We've put, I've put it on the page. I, yeah. I I shared it on the page. So this guy, he he's got like four targets around oh, him and yes, like. swings and goes nuts and and all kinds of fun stuff. So, and here's the thing. So Rowan is quite quite opposed to it, whereas I'm a, I'm a little bit more open in terms of. Look, the guys are do, at least he's doing something, like that, that's a benefit. Number two is. I don't necessarily see what he's done and we'll share it again but what he's doing is not necessarily super practical in my point of view um, but um, what we're going to do is we're going to actually do some force on force training one of one of our uh, combatives group um, the guy actually was vehemently defending him says like who are we to actually uh, criticize him because he's actually doing something but in the same vein I, I went back and said hang on so look we're not going to criticize any further but let's try that we're going to take some mm. airsoft and um, let's try it we've got enough people we can we can play well we might even make a video of it to see how it actually plays out um, just for shits and giggles but the whole point of it is that our, our unarmed and armed combatives sort of flow into one like most like mostly my own arm would be jiu-jitsu just getting back into jiu-jitsu again this year Rowan's boxing and then um following on to that is that we figure out a way to at least have a two hour session not necessarily a full range session but definitely a combination of it the reason why i'm saying is i need to do a combative session is that we, because we do a lot of sports shooting and we'll we'll get to the fundamentals just now and the fundamentals will will be i'm aiming to do a lot of sports shooting this year and with the sports shooting that i want to do this year not everything in what we do in sports shooting is actually cond conducive to good defensive principles yeah so as much as we advocate sport shooting it's not always yeah. the most tactical or, yeah, a, or yeah. tactically correct tactically correct yeah. and what i want to do is just, just want to bring a little bit more balance to to my thought process and my and because it's you have to train for it it's 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 as simple as that yeah and what i started doing this what i d do what tends to work is my dry firing at home which i'm way too lazy at but my at home dry firing is all concealed carry combative type stuff and then my, sh my because that's kind of easy to do you get home you take your kit off do some draws whatever you need to do but yeah it's v you need to be able to bridge that gap it's very, yeah, it's very important it, it, yeah. it's just connecting the dots so 
then moving from the unarmed the next point is obviously the fundamentals so the fundamentals in in my case i've got some i've got some aspirations and <laughs> yeah I, I need to be able to compete with the top guys in the in the masters division it's as simple as that it's nothing nothing much more but a part part of those goals and obviously you need so like, i think just for the sake of the listeners and idpa members you shoot stock service pistol master Mm. Um, in in IDPA myself I'm shoot CCP expert um, just so as a background so the guys know what we're talking about yeah so my initial goal is not necessarily to win the division look I, I want to try and there's some serious competition there which is great but I need to focus on those things it's not the it's not the goals it's the tactics towards the goals so for me uh, I've I've sort of marked off two big trips like definitely northern nationals that i want to go do this this year and africa champs definitely it seems like africa champs might be in kenya which, which would be a nice trip that'll be a nice uh, an all-around little adventure which is great but all in all look my son also shoots he he, he won the, the novice division last year at africa champs so he's like we've got a we've got a partnership going and there's a lot of stuff that we want to do tactically in terms of what we want to train is like we need to go all right an extra training range session once a month for for the sport shooting and then obviously two or three dry fire sessions every week it's stuff to stuff to get to yeah in terms of my sport shooting this year um, i think a big one for me is southern nationals there's a chance we might host no we're definitely hosting yeah, yeah. so we're hosting here in george but last year I took silver, so and this year it's, I think it's it's yeah. Look, I want an expert. I, for me, a big thing now is is to do well in CCP expert. To win expert. Yeah, win yeah. expert. Yeah. And then maybe see if I can. Well, not maybe. Otherwise, it's no. It's not a goal. It needs to be a goal. Is to do a to be able to shoot a reliable master qualification look, before the end of the year look i think yeah. if, if your goal is to win ccp expert in one of the larger matches like mm. southern nationals or northern nationals or africa champs the the divisions are quite there's there's quite a lot mm. of experts there now so the chances of you getting a match bump it's almost like yeah like but that's a tricky become thing a, because become a win win ccp expert and get to master yeah, so I think by the end of the year, the tricky thing is, unfortunately, sometimes CCP it is not so much it's not depth so well in, in the yeah. higher, higher divisions. So, but yeah, that's that's a goal for me yeah. uh, in, in terms of my shooting. I am unsure about a Kenya trip for me this year with a new job. Definitely Southerns and Northerns, mm. a, a big question yeah, mark at the moment. I think Northerns is at Centurion, military defensive. So yeah, so we'll, I'm, I'm definitely doing it then. It's nice in Joburg. It's not a bridge too far, and it's a. I think that'll be a nice trip, especially for the club members. But then, yeah, that's that's about it. And then for tactical, so we, again, it's like it's tough for us. Um, since we're out here on the garden route, we don't necessarily have super access to everything. To, just to put it into context, if I want to go do a training session at, in Pretoria um, with my own firearm, um, if I want to fly up, uh, I need to ship everything. Um, yeah. ammo guns i need to ship it back i need to fly there i need to fly back i need to take time off to actually do it um, if i'm driving up that's a day there it's a day back um, these things all cost money it's 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 quite an expense i would say every time that i've com competed with sports adventure shooting it's probably about a seven thousand rand seven eight thousand rand exercise whereas what we're planning this year is like i think we've got Kim, uh, uh, arno's movie coming yeah in, in march. Combat of concepts mm -hmm. yeah they're talking march april yeah. and so I've, I've literally said it doesn't necessarily matter who it is with but i need to get one one extra course in this year from from somebody reputable that's that's as simple as that in terms of my tactical training in terms of tactical practice that's a different story and i've i've sort of talked about it that's part of the unarmed yeah. combatives and the combatives training mm. is I, I need to put at least an, a two hour training session once a month uh, towards that so yeah between between doing one one class and then actually doing some training and exercise once a month that's that's about my goals yeah i mean getting on and down this year for for tactical um i think a skill gap on my side we, we've done a lot of the, the kind of the big ticket courses 
But the big one next now is, is fighting in and around buildings or in, in and around structures. More a CQC kind of stuff. And guys, we are not talking about kicking down doors and hostage yeah, rescue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is, you're stuck in, in your house, you need to get out. How do you or do it right? You need to you need to get into your house or, or yeah. somewhere, so, something like that. But yeah, that's that's a, a kind of skill gap for me that I feel that I and I've got a lot of questions about that. So I think that's a big one for me. Um in, in terms of that, and we'll get that sorted probably first half of the new year. Of yeah. this year. Of this year, yeah. Uh, we're in twenty twenty. And then we didn't do a whiskey of the of the of the month. Because, because it's too hot. It's too hot, we're drinking beer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, guys. Uh Thanks for listening. Have a good 2020. All the best. Hope you had a, a good break. And if you didn't have a good break, um, you, you're lucky. You off to a good start already. Um, yeah. All the best for 2020. Yeah. And guys, yeah. Thanks very much from our side. Please share the podcast. Um, if you've got any special requests or something that you want us to talk about, and and share your goals on on the page. Yeah. Tell us what you want to do. You know, let us hold each other accountable. Yeah. Draw, um, draw the line in the sand. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's one of those things, and it's it's like when this idea came to my mind of of doing this podcast specifically for this i'm like hang on it's actually gone there's a very valid reason for us to look at this guys again that texas that texas uh church shooting church that guy was trained and he was prepared like we, we need to we need to up our standards the shocking thing for me is just that we cannot think that we are safe anymore whether it's a church or a restaurant or a party in a square, bad stuff happens. And some guys aren't out to rob or, or, or steal something from you. Some guys are just out to hurt mm. or kill or maim. So keep your head on a swivel. Yeah, keep the powder dry Yeah, and the beer's cold. Fantastic, guys. And like usual, thanks very much to the guys from Renegade Media um, and EDC South Africa, Kimber of Concepts, um, Paratus, our supporters. Yeah, let us. Always sharing. Guys, thank you. Have a glorious start to the new year, and we'll speak again soon. Yeah, cheers.